Please, Matthew chapter 24. Yeah, okay. Yep, again. Yep, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew chapter 24, please. All right, so we surprisingly have a lot of people online who believe in what they call a mid-trib rapture. Now, in my arguments, I showed you the fallacy of mid and post-trib rapture many times. But in this video, I'm going to make it more specific. So what these people teach is that basically they believe that when the abomination of desolation occurs at Daniel 9.27, which we won't turn to, so I'm just going to save you time, okay? It's called the abomination of desolation. Now, in the abomination of desolation, what they believe is going to happen is right here is called the tribulation. And then right here is the wrath of God, they'll call it. So what they believe is this. They hesitate to call themselves mid-trib. The reason why is this. It's because, now what we believe is this. We believe this whole timeline is the tribulation and wrath. That's what we believe. We don't think there's a difference with those two. We think that they're both in the same thing. They're interchangeable throughout the Bible. But there are some people who will insist that the first half is the tribulation, the second half is the wrath. Now, for people who believe this way the first time, uh, I'm not getting on you, but there are some mid-tribbers out there who are actually uh, really messed up people. And some of them also criticize us very heavily. So I'm going to be criticizing those people in return. Now, in this one right here, what some of them, I'm not saying all, what some of them believe in and they accuse us is oh you know we're we're not mid-trip we're actually post-trip you know why because see this is the tribulation so then they believe that the rapture is going to happen right here thus since this is wrath not tribulation it's perfectly correct to call this um post-trip rapture you see that's their mindset that's how they argue now what we insist is i that they're both the one and the same now, some of them go so far, I don't know where they get this idea from, but something right here is like around 75 days. There's like a little bit of a gap after that, and then the wrath, and then they get raptured. Now, where'd you get that from? Nowhere. All right, I don't know where they get that from. I think some of them are just so arrogant and prideful and then criticize other people that they think that they're so smart enough, smarter than God in the Bible, they can just add 75 more days in there. All right, but anyways, the point is this. Let's look at Matthew 24. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 24, and then we will read verse 15. When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. See, right here. Then what they believe, what's going to happen eventually after that, is look at verse 29. Immediately, notice, after the tribulation. See that? So sometime afterward... Of those days shall the sun be darkened. Okay, now remember these part of the details. The sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So notice verse 34 is the rapture. So in verse 34 is your tribulation rapture. Now, Bible-believing dispensationalists, we believe in dispensational rapture. So we don't deny this, okay? But what we believe, as I taught you before, is that we believe in dispensational. See that? More than one rapture. So we believe there's one which is pre-trib, before the tribulation. Then we believe that there's another tribulation rapture that's going to occur sometime at the tribulation. Now here's the thing. Their argument falls apart. So they have a verse that proves tribulation rapture, right? But their argument falls apart because what we argued is this. What we simply argue is it's a tribulation rapture for tribulation saints.
And then it's a pre-trib rapture for Christians. That's how we argue. Now, the thing is this, is that how we argue why is because of 1 Thessalonians 5. God hath not appointed us unto wrath. So you can double check on that one to make sure I'm correct. But when it talks about the rapture here, it talks about the context of the rapture here. And it says this rapture is not appointed to wrath. So this is our logic. We believe this, see. Because we argue pre-trib, our proof is this. Our proof is we're not going through the tribulation because the tribulation is wrath. Remember, this is what we believe, okay? So let me circle this so you can get it. This is what we believe here, okay? So we believe the tribulation and the wrath is the same. So because the tribulation and the wrath is the same, thus we're not appointed, see, time period. We're not in that time period of wrath. And since the context is a rapture, that means the rapture is not appointed to wrath. Meaning this rapture, when we go up, is not going to be at the time period of tribulation. Thus we go up. That's how we argue. But they argue this, is that they argue that this wrath, see, is over here. Okay, so the issue is this. The issue is we have to debunk this. By debunking this, then we realize that there's no such thing as a mid-trib rapture, or what they like to call post-trib, because they think that this whole timeline is not the tribulation. Now, I'm going to debunk that. I'm going to say they're both the one and the same. This whole thing is a tribulation, and this whole thing is wrath. Now, in order to prove it, the first thing is this. The first thing is, what you're going to notice right here, is that notice in verse 29, it's after, uh, after the tribulation, the sun darkened, moon not give light, stars fall from heaven, right? So if you remember that part, we're going to look at Revelation 6. Revelation 6. Now, Revelation 6 and Matthew 24, that's the post-trib or mid-trib favorite passage. Now, I'm going to... Just call them mid-trib, okay, so that there's not this confusion going on. I, they're accurately called mid-trib. They insist they're post-trib, but I'm going to debunk it later. So let just put up with me calling them mid-trib for now. Now, Revelation 6 and Matthew 24, you're going to notice that. Sun, darken, stars, and also an earthquake. So Revelation 6 is their passage to prove... <coughs> a rapture that's before the wrath like this so we're going to look at revelation chapter 6 okay revelation chapter 6 look at verse 12 i beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake the sun became black as sat cloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind Okay, so they claim verse 12 and 13 of Revelation 12 matches with Matthew 24, which is true, right? We can agree with that. It matches. Now, there is a little more detail now. Look at verse 14. The heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Why? Because they're getting raptured, a tribulation rapture. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So notice right here that we see that mountain and island moved out of place. Now, it says every, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. <laughs> every mountain island moved. So they claim when this day happens, which is right here, then the wrath of God happens. Because they say, verse 17, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? See, so the wrath starts. So they weren't going through wrath all this time. It only starts after Revelation 6, 12 to 13, when they get raptured. Now, the fallacy with that is we're going to look at verse Revelation 16. Revelation 16. Now, all can agree that this is well underway after the tribulation. This is like near the end, okay? We can all agree with that part. Mid-trib, post-trib, whoever you are, we can agree that part. So, Revelation 16 will be around here. But let's keep reading. Verse 18, there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a what? Great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. 
And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Now look at this. And every what? Island fled, fled away, and the mountains were not found. Now did you see that? That's reflecting what? Revelation 6. So you got to realize this Revelation 16 and Revelation 6 is talking about the same event. Remember, they claim Revelation 6 happens what? Here, right? At the middle. But we see it's going to be at the end here. And guess what? It's going to be through the wrath. Now they're going to deny that, but look at this. Verse 17. This event, this earthquake island moving out is verse 17. And, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. So it's the seventh vial. See that? Why? Because there were six more vials and they're called wrath. Look at Revelation 16, 1. Revelation 16, 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the what? Wrath of God upon the earth. Now, are you convinced by now? See? Remember Matthew 24, sun darkened, earthquake, stuff like that, and Revelation 6? They think that this is the same thing. Okay, don't take back what you said. It's the same thing, right? That rapture. All these things that are going on, see? Revelation 16 showed you that, and it told you right there that this is what? You've already been through wrath. But don't forget Matthew 24. This rapture starts what? After the what? Tribulation. Thus, the tribulation and wrath is the same thing. Now, if they deny that, I showed you a verse before, but you can double check. Look at Luke 21. Luke 21. Luke 21. <laughs> and we will read verse 22. Luke 21, 22. But uh, let's start off at verse 25, okay? Luke 21 is the same thing as Matthew 24, okay? It's repeating the same thing. But Luke 21 tells you specifically what it's called. Look at Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken so notice it's repeating the same thing with Matthew 24 but look what it's called this event so Luke 21 is the same thing as Matthew 24 then there's no doubt it's talking about the same thing but look what it's called look at verse 20 uh, look at verse 22 for these be the days of what vengeance but look at verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and what? Wrath upon this people. There's no doubt. See this, uh, remember, after the tribulation of those days, that's what Matthew 24 said. And what did Luke 21 call it? Those days are what? Days of wrath. But... These guys, some of them will try to go around it and they'll say, well, it's the devil's wrath. It's not God's wrath. That's how they get around that. But the simple debunking to that is Revelation 16.1. We saw that, right? Pour out the vials of the wrath of who? God. That's what it said. Oh, and by the way, if that's not enough, Revelation 6, we read that verse, right? Verses 12 through 13. What's it called? The sixth seal, right? Did you look at seals one through five? Who unleashes the seals? Is it Satan or God? It's God, if you read that, right? And you don't think that this, and look at those seals. Look at God's wrath. He sends death, hell, and slaughters a quarter to a third of the population. <laughs> See, so let's be honest now. Let's be honest. See, this thing is totally debunked. Tribulation and wrath is the same thing. So if you're not, if you're going to be raptured before the wrath hits, that means this whole timeline, see? 
And that includes the tribulation because they're both one and the same. We saw that. But if you're still not convinced, go back to Revelation 16. Let's close it right here. Revelation 16. So you got to realize this. That's why being a dispensationalist is so urgent and important. If you're not, then you don't know much Bible and you're going to miss this out and you're going to believe in wrong doctrine. See, that's why dispensationalism is important. They don't divide things. You notice dispensationalists, see, they divide things, right? And then they connect the puzzle together and they find the right doctrine as a result. But a lot, some of these guys who criticize dispensationalism, they criticize that and they want convenient one, two, three verses and base their doctrine out of it. No, we take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the verses that talk about this and connect it together. That's how you do it. Look at Revelation chapter 16. Now look at verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So notice right here is saying, blessed if you're watching, because I'm going to come down as a thief at the rapture, and then I'm going to take you up. Now here's the thing, is that if Revelation, <coughs> excuse me, if Revelation 16, 15, which the mid-trib or post-trib are going to act, argue, oh, see, this is the rapture here. See, this is the rapture. That's what they're going to argue, right? But here's the problem. If this is the rapture, when did he state that? He stated that before verse 12, right? The sixth angel pouring the sixth vial of the wrath of God. See? So they're already going through those wraths of God, and when the sixth vial of the wrath is poured out, then God says what? Be prepared for the rapture. That shows it didn't happen yet. They're already going through the wrath, and then they get raptured. But look at Luke 12, Luke chapter 12. Luke 12. Now, mid-tribbers and post-tribbers are not going to like this part right here. Look at Luke chapter 12. <clears throat> look at this. Remember? Blessed are you if you watch because of the coming of Jesus, right, when he raptures. Look at this. Verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, see, that rapture coming, shall find what? Watching. Remember Revelation 16, 15? Blessed are you if you watch because I come as a thief, because that's the rapture. But let's keep reading. Look at verse 38. And he, he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so. Blessed are those servants. Look at verse 39. And this know that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the what? Thief would come, he would have watched. Remember Revelation 16, 15? I come as a thief, blessed are you if you watch because of the coming of the Son of Man. So there's no doubt Luke 12 and Revelation 16 is the same thing about watching for the rapture. See that? But let's keep reading right here. Be therefore ready, verse 40, be therefore ready also for the Son of Man <clears throat> cometh at an hour when ye think not. But do you know how he comes or when he comes? This one <laughs> is going to be surprising from you. Look at verse 36. You know how he comes from? And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from what? The wedding. Did you read that? So when God comes down at this tribulation rapture, he's returning from what? A wedding up in heaven. If the church is not in heaven married to Jesus Christ, then who is he coming from a wedding with? And you know the wedding is with the church. We saw, uh, you know, in Ephesians 5, we won't turn there for time's sake, and Revelation 19. The church is up there, married to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ comes down from the wedding, comes to take those servants. See that? How can he come from the wedding if the church was not already up there to begin with? So that proves the church was already up there long before the tribulation rapture and the tribulation rapture is known as tribulation and wrath. 
And when God says to get ready for that rapture, already you passed six vials when he stated that. Vials of wrath of God. That's what it specifically said. So you can't be a mid-tribber. You can't be a post-tribber or however way you want to call it. It's interchangeably tribulation and wrath. There's no doubt about that.